Hello and welcome back to Gen Chem with Dr. J. I'm Dr. Janita Pritchett and on this channel we cover all things Gen Chem related. On this video I'll be talking about kinetic molecular theories associated with gas molecules. Let's get started. The simplest model of the behavior of gases is known as the kinetic molecular theory. And if we think about that word kinetic, kinetic we know is associated with things being in motion. So in this theory, a gas is modeled as a collection of particles, either molecules or atoms, depending on the gas, in constant motion. And so because they're in constant motion, there are going to be some things that evolve um, from these collisions that can occur. So the particles of a gas are always moving. And there's really some uh, negligible attraction between the particles themselves. So they're just constantly bouncing off, hitting off the container, hitting off of each other, more so acting like billiard balls um, in the types of collisions that they're doing. So they impact one another and then disperse. And so there's a lot of empty space between gas particles compared to the actual size of the particles themselves. And so the average kinetic energy of the gas particles is directly related to the, um, the temperature in Kelvin that's present. So if we raise the temperature, the average speed of the particles is going to increase, okay? So they're all going to start getting energized and start moving. Now, just because they're getting energized and starting moving, it doesn't mean that they're all going to start moving at the same speed. Much like we have different cars that are different sizes and, different, uh, and can yield different speeds, the same thing happens here. Where, you know, if you think about if you have like a little bitty Corvette, that can move really fast when, once it gets some energy, some fuel. Or a semi-trailer, which is much bigger, will move a lot slower despite getting some fuel as well. And so the take-home message is that the, the amount of speed that it can take is dependent on the overall size of the atom or molecule that we're looking at. If it is something that is smaller, then we would expect the temperature is going to increase the rate much faster compared to those larger molecules. Um, we also want to remember, even though they're in motion, they're constantly striking one another, they're not actually combining and, and, and adhering to one another, like a you know, car accident where they're coming crushed together. They're more so acting like billiard balls and just bouncing off of each other and generating pressure in the containers that they're in. And so this is just a visual example of what to imagine when you think about these molecules in motion. They're bouncing off of each other. There's an elastic collision versus an inelastic collision where they're colliding and remaining co together. Okay. And so you can actually calculate um, the energy that could be um, uh, developed by the amount of temperature that you're, you're adding or how you're raising the temperature. And so the average kinetic energy of the gas molecules depends on the average mass and the velocity of something. And so the, if you see the larger that it is, that energy, it's going to take more energy to get it in motion. Um, so gases in the same container have the same temperature and therefore they have the same average kinetic energy. But if they have different masses, the only way for them to have the same kinetic energy is for them to have different average velocities. Our main take home message is this, Lighter particles will have a faster average velocity than more massive particles. Now this picture here just really shows you a, a, a graph of the molecular speeds versus the molar mass masses of substances. And so you can see if you look at something like hydrogen, which has a very small molar mass, you can see as the temperature um, that the, excuse me, not the temperature, the, with the molar mass being so much lighter, the average velocity is so much higher. You see where, where we're at. Whereas if we look at some of our heavier molecules here, the mass or the speed is, um, is slower. And so again, the lighter it is, the faster it's gonna be, the faster that velocity will be, okay? So to have the same average kinetic energy, heavier molecules must have a slower average speed compared to our, our lighter molecules. Um, now you can actually go about calculating this, this kinetic energy by using some of the equations here. We don't really delve too much into these into my class, um, but I am showing you these just in case you need to figure out how to calculate the, the kinetic energies um, that are appropriate here. Um, and you can also calculate the average velocity using that equation that's found below. Um, again, temperature will affect the molecular speed. As the temperature of a gas sample increases, we expect the velocity distribution of the molecule to shift towards higher velocities. So they're gaining more energy, so they're able to move a lot faster um, as the temperature is increased. 
Um, and then one of the other things we'll, we'll talk about here is this idea of the mean free path. And so molecules in a gas, they travel in straight lines until they collide with something else that's going to change the direction of it. And so you can see in the picture here where these gas molecules are bouncing around, they're able to strike a surface and then that changes the, the trajectory in which it's traveling. So the average dis distance a molecule travels between collisions is called the mean free path. And the mean free path decreases as the pressure is increased in a, a vessel. Um, and we have two more concepts that we want to talk about briefly. And this is, again, because gases are constantly in motion. And it's the idea of diffusion and effusion. So these are two processes that do occur uh, as the gases are in motion. So the process of, of a collection of molecules spreading out from high concentration to low concentration is known as diffusion. And so remember, we learned in that very first, one of the very first slides from this chapter that I presented in an earlier video, that these gases are always trying to move from that high to low um, situation. Now, another process that can occur is that we're collecting these molecules as they escape through a small hole into a vacuum, and that process is known as a fusion. Now, the rates of effusion and diffusion are going to be related to the average um, velocity that, it, that it is associated with that molecule. So for gases at the same temperature, this means that the rate of gas movement is inversely proportional to the square root of its molar mass. And so you can actually calculate how fast things would effuse if you have information about the molar mass of the substance that you're studying. And so this video or this picture just shows you a quick depiction of what effusion looks like. And so we're looking at getting these particles, these gas molecules through that small hole under vacuum into a vacuum um, and, and measuring that, that how fast that's happening. And so if you wanted to calculate uh, the, the rates of effusion, you would use this equation here where you're looking at the rate of one substance compared to the rate of the other is equal to the square root of the inverse of their molar masses. And so you would just simply plug in some numbers here. And so like uh, for two different gases at the same temperature, the ratio of their rates of effusion is given by this, this equation. So for instance here, if you were asked to figure out the rate of effusion for nitrogen versus oxygen, well, what we would do is you would put the rate of nitrogen up top compared to the rate of oxygen on the bottom. And then you would end up calculating what the square root of the molar masses inverse would be. And so we would put 32 on the top for oxygen and 28.02 on the bottom for your nitrogen. And so if we plug that into our calculators, we have 32 divided by 28.02. And now if we take the square root of that answer, what we end up getting is, is a rate of 1.07. And so what that means is that if we were looking at the difference between oxygen and nitrogen, how fast they would effuse, well, then the rate of nitrogen is equal to 1.07 times that of the rate of oxygen. So I hope this video helped you understand some of the basic kinetic theories associated with um, gases. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what other videos you'd like to see in the future. See you guys in future videos. Have a great day. Bye-bye.